All right, welcome to episode two of the High Banker Rebuild. This episode is going to be on the spray bar. So basically what happens, you're gonna take your material and throw it up into this section here and somehow you're gonna to need to wash the dirt off the bigger rocks uh, and make it so that it's fluid so that when it gets to the bottom part, it's gonna flow out to the end no problem over your, your goal catching mats. <coughs> so we need to somehow figure out how to get water. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna build that from scratch and I have a two inch pump that I'm going to reduce down to an inch and a half so I need to build an inch and a half spray bar so I'm gonna build a u-shape which is standard um, some guys would build it so the bottom they use down here other guys build it so the bottom they use up here and just for simple ease of the matter I am going to build the bottom of my u here so that I can have everything attached to this main support for now uh, and then I will come down this way and this way spraying in so to do that we've just gone to the local hardware store don't forget always have your duct tape gone to the local hardware store and we bought a tee now the reason it's a three-way tee or four-way a three-way tee is because down the road I may want to put a wash-up hose on here or whatever so that would just be something that I, when I'm doing my cleanups I can wash out and have a, a movable flexible hose and whatever so that would set up to here but for today we're just gonna leave it with a cap on to her uh, but it's gonna be there so that when we want to upgrade to the hose later we can so the first thing is we need to position it in the middle here all right what we want to do first is measure for the middle so we've got 14 inches so right at 7 inches We're going to be farmer exact on this one. All right, so now that we have her in the middle, we're going to red green it to keep it in place and make measurements for the rest of it. All right, so we're going to come with a straight out to a 90. So we need to measure that gap. Now remember there's an offset on the inside of each each piece so we need a straight three inches so we'll take our pipe that we've got here and we'll cut a three inch piece off of it my trusty owl over here got me the less power one because i'm not allowed to play with power tools anymore all right so once you have her cut you're going to have i don't know if you can see it real good but you'll have all these little burrs and stuff sticking out. That's just going to cause you nothing but problems down the road. So just take a quick piece of sandpaper and give her a nice little rub. Get rid of all those little hanger on. All right. And then just dry fit it. You don't want to put any glue on anything yet. Doesn't get any better than that, boys and girls. And then we'll do the next piece. Okay, two and three quarters. Doesn't get any better than that, ladies and gentlemen. Looking good. All right. Next, we want to build down for our sprayers, which is just going to be a straight piece of pipe with an end cap onto it. And then we'll drill into that piece of pipe so that we have the washer. So we're going to I think we'll come down past the end of the steel tray and to the first three or four inches of the spray or of the grizzly bars just so that we have that little bit of extra water washing them as they fly away 16 and a half inches So 
So again, make sure you sand all your pieces. Now one of the things you want to make sure of when you're sanding all these pieces and you have all these little particles floating around, <coughs> before you glue everything together, the smartest thing to do is to take an air hose and blow the system out on the inside because the last thing you want is all these little particles building up in your water system. So what that'll end up doing is just plug off your hose, your holes, sorry, it'll plug off your holes and restrict some water. You might get higher pressure spray from some holes and less from others. So make sure that you know all these little plastic pieces or any dust or anything like that, wash your system out real well uh, before you finalize it and glue it all together. And, and you're just gonna prevent those issues down the road. Wow, that fits pretty darn good if I do say so myself. All right, and then the last piece that we're gonna put on these is the end caps. Just like that. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take a drill at the angle that you want for your sprays and do that and then you'll clamp these down so that they're nice and stable. It, it, you know you really don't, you're not going to have 3000 PSI so you know you don't have to do it with uh, some heavy duty stuff but you do want to make sure it's fairly sturdy. You know hauling this stuff in and out of the woods you know it shakes around a bit you know you accidentally hit it with some dirt or maybe your shovel or whatever so make sure that you do get it nice and secure but not so secure that you can't tear it down and replace a piece if you if you do crack a piece or whatever so now that the spray part is pretty much done what we need to do is figure out well how the heck are we going to get the water into it so I'm going to move my duct tape around a little bit so we can work on the main inlet T. So just give me a sec on that. Now that we've got that done, this is where our manifold, water manifold is basically most important to us. Uh, this is where the water comes in and gets redirected. So like I said, we will probably hook a cleanup hose up to here down the road. Uh, but for today, we're just going to put a plug in there. So all we've done, I don't know if you can see it super good, but we've just got inch and a half insert threaded on the one side uh, so that it, once we're down the road, I can just unthread it, put another fitting on for the hose, and then move forward from there. So for now, we're going to leave it threaded on with a cap. Make sure your gasket's on there. And that just goes in there like that. Super easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so the next thing we got to do is have a valve. And the reason we put a valve on here is because our pump, it's a lot easier to control our water flow with a, a simple ball valve than it is to try and adjust the throttle on the pump. You know, you want your pump to be running fairly steady all the time, but you might not want your water to be running steady all the time. You might get into a, a clay situation where some of the stuff you're digging for a while has clay in it or or maybe some black sand situations where you know you want to turn the water up a little bit because that black clay is so heavy or, or whatever so the ball valve is the easiest way to do it you can control it right here and see what's going on instead of walking 15 20 feet away to your pump adjusting it coming back and so on so we're going to put a ball valve now we don't want the ball valve just sitting here you know in the way so what I think we're gonna do is we'll put another little two inch two and a half inch piece of pipe here with a 90 degree elbow and we'll have the ball valve sitting off to the side like this and a small piece of pipe again this piece isn't really going to be that important we just don't want it sticking way out to Timbuktu we just kind of want it to be in our own little backyard here so we'll just cut a piece off So if you notice on the valve, the, the, the most inexpensive valve, these are about three or four bucks. They're all threaded valves. So to make it fit onto an inch and a half ABS, PVC, whatever the heck you're calling it today, uh, pipe, 
is you're gonna need just the straight fitting, but then you'll need the threaded coupler. So that'll go on here. So you have the male coupler to the female thread. Now some ball valves are gonna have directional flow arrows that say the water should flow in this direction. This one does not. This is a two-way valve. So then we're gonna need a piece of pipe to go in between here again. A little smaller, you don't need a huge, I don't want this out here. It's gonna to be too much weight on the system. So I figure if I get just enough, just enough to have them connected, and that should bring everything out to the edge so that there's nothing impeding on my tray. So we'll go ahead and cut another little piece for right here. Like so. So this is your basic setup that you're gonna have. Again, nice big valve here so you can adjust it. Adjust your water flow. Again, we're not gluing any of this together yet. We wanna make sure that we have everything the way we want it before we get to that point. Now, I'm not sure where you're gonna have your water hoses coming in, but if your water hose is, you know, straight out that way, then this might be okay. If it's over there, you know, you might wanna maybe get a 45. Or, or maybe you might want to angle it down like that, take some of the pressure off it. Or maybe you're okay with that. Totally your preference. I'm not telling you how to build yours, I'm just telling you how I'm building mine. So, next we need something to hook the hose to. So the hose is going to get hooked with Chemlock system. So Chemlock system, if you don't know what it is, is this setup right here. So this is gonna go, my inch and a half hose goes onto that. So I have a quick connector that's gonna head onto that. And it just goes like this. And then these pull up to lock it in place. Boom, you're done. So that's your quick connector. So as we talked about with the ball valve, it's got the, the female threaded side. So you need a male threaded quick connector. All right. So let's go ahead and put that on real quick. Oy vey, there we go. And there you go. Now, one of the big things, anyone who does work with plumbing or whatever, one of the big things you know to do is either use, there's a product out there that's similar to this. This is just thread tape right and you can put that on all your threads I suggest using something like that there is a, a silver liquid uh, thread goop thread pipe dope or whatever you want to call it that you can put on the threads it'll do the same thing I just prefer the thread tape for me it's the easiest it's less messy and and the wife likes it because then I'm not coming home with thread th with pipe dope all over my clothes and trying to figure out how to clean that up so once you do the final setup, I would suggest that you use that. So here we go. This is the actual setup. I'll bring the camera over and give you a little bit of a closer look. So there you are. There's your U-shape. Here is your setup for a future hose down the road. Coming to a 90 to your ball valve so you can adjust your flow to your quick connector for your hose. And that's my basic setup. The only thing I haven't done, obviously, like I said, we just dry fit it right now. We'll glue it down the road. The only thing I haven't done is drilled the water in the water holes, the jet holes. Uh, I'm not gonna do that until I'm actually out in the field. I'll do that out in the field because I'm gonna actually wanna see the first couple of holes, make sure that they're right, and we'll go from there. So that's the basic setup of my spray setup. If you have any comments, if you've built one before and you think I'm doing something wrong, or maybe you have a suggestion for me to do it better, uh, I'm always open to that stuff. I'm not saying that I'll actually put it into play before we start using the machine, but when I do actually do some adjustments down the road, uh, I, I will definitely take all of that into account and we can go from there. So yeah, let's get you back in spot here. Whew. 
jingle jangle camera. All right. All right, so now that we've got that set up, one of the things we have to consider is our hose. So this is what we're gonna be using for a hose. It's an inch and a half, almost like a fire hose. But there's the, the setup for the hose. I've got the two screw locks on there. All right, so then when we're this, this end will be hooked to the pump. And once the pump's going, we'll come in, we'll set it up like this. And as you can see, the hose is out of the way. I can get to the bottom of my, my rack. I can come in here. I can push some rocks down if I need to. There's nothing in the way. Like I said, I was considering putting this down here, but that was the biggest thing. The place where I'm going to be using this machine, there's some fairly good sized river rock and it might end up bashing into this and breaking it all the time. So I, I'm going to do it this way and we'll go and we'll figure it out. I may need some sort of water pressure shooting up, but I might hook something like maybe I'll hook a little jet here and mount it there shooting up that way or whatever. This is just my beginning, uh, not my end. <laughs> I'm sure I will change this thing 30, 40 times. Um, before the end of this season um, so yeah <coughs> what I'll do now I'll kind of get this out of the way we'll bring the pump in and show you how I'm gonna set up the pump because when you buy your pump it doesn't come with all the proper fittings on it it's just a basic pump and you have to put all the fittings on uh, so we'll bring that in now we'll go over that real quick and then we'll call this episode two so now we've got our hose set up to our uh, high banker at the other end of that hose is just a cut piece of hose. Now you can spend all kinds of money getting hoses that are already done up with your fittings. Uh, I'm on a little bit of a tight budget. So what I've done is I've gone to our local hardware store and uh, I've purchased individual pieces. It saves me about 50 to 75% of the actual cost. So one of the big things we need to do is have a quick connect on the end of the hose. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. It's an inch and a half hose. So we have an inch and a half chem lock and it basically just dry fits in. When it's wet, it goes in a lot easier. <laughs> all right, so you're gonna butt the hose all the way up to the flat lip and then you'll bring in your screw tighteners. Now the trick is you don't want to go too, too tight, but you want it snug enough. It's not going to blow off at the type of pressures that you're going to be using. So I kind of go hand tight and then, you know, three quarters of a turn after that. I do my fasteners offset. Um, that way if I'm ever dragging the hose and I hit the hose the wrong way and it breaks one of the fasteners, at least the other one will still be able to hold it on. If you put them both side by side and you hit something enough to break one fastener, you'll probably break both. Alright, hose is set up. So now we need something on the pump to hook this to. Now what we had to do, because it's a two inch pump, I wanted to reduce it down. So what I got, I'm not even sure what it's called, but it's a two inch female, female. And then I got a two inch to inch and a half inside thread offset. So you're gonna put your two inch to two inch on, then your two inch to inch and a half on. And we'll just do that hand tight for you right now. Again, when I do this in the final step, I obviously will be using uh, thread tape. Now make sure you put this onto your, your water exhaust um, because you're not going to be sucking water from here. So Then you'll put your inch and a half quick connector on there. Some people call them chem locks, whatever. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter to me. It all does the same job, no matter what name it has. And then you'll take your pipe wrench and just tighten it all up nice and snug. And that way you can hook your machine up. Super quick time. <coughs> so that leaves 
leaves us 50% of the way there with our pump. Now what we need to look at is our intake side. Well, our intake side is a lot easier. I don't have to worry about reducing to a two, down to an inch and a half. I got a two inch suction hose, right? So with this two inch suction hose, it's already, came, it came, this one came pre-done. I got it on sale because somebody ordered it and didn't bother to pick it up. So thank you for doing that for me, whoever you were. So now you got a two inch quick connect male. So all I did was I got a two inch quick connect female. And again, you screw that to the intake side of the pump. And then you can hook your hose. Oy vey. Into your pump like so. So that's going to be your pump setup. Now if you do question why I only have uh, a smaller pump uh, in Alberta where I live, we're allowed to pump 11 liters per second which uh, this pump pumps 10.4. This is about as max as I can get with the type of mining license that I have. So that's why I did that. Now, what I'm going to do is show you what I'm going to connect to the part of the hose that I put into the water because there are regulations on that as well, and I'll show you real quick. Okay, so one of the, the things that they have in Alberta is a regulation. You need to have a certain level of filter on the other side of your hose because river dredging is illegal, I guess that might be, and you don't want to be sucking up fish or whatever. So what I've gone ahead and done is I bought a two inch foot valve and it already has the grating on it you can see here let me bring it in closer for you it's already got the grating on it that falls within the regulation and it's just basically a check valve foot valve which is also good to have because that way once my system is all primed up and then I turn the pump off because I want to do something maybe I'm doing a, a midday cleanup or whatever I don't have to worry about repriming everything afterwards because the foot valve is going to stop all that water from leaking back out the other way so like we talked about before we've got the two inch hookups on the suction hose so all we needed to do was get a two inch male part threaded and that will thread right into our foot valve and then that hooks directly into the bottom back of the hose voila and that goes directly into the water now I'm probably going to put it in a milk crate and then wrap a um, window screen around the outside of the milk crate just to keep the minnows and the, the additional little um, organic stuff out, the leaves that are floating down the river and whatever. So that's my setup. The next episode we're going to talk about what I put on top of the aluminum to catch the gold. And I'll tell you this, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and there's about 3,642 other people that are gonna tell you they have a better way and they're probably right. Again, I'm just starting out of the research that I've done, my setup is the best for me. I'm doing flower gold in rivers and we'll talk about that a little more on the next episode. But thanks for joining us on this episode. I appreciate your support. Remember, if you found something useful or you just found it entertaining. Feel free to subscribe, turn on your notifications, hit that like button, every little bit helps. We will be having a giveaway at 100 subscribers. As of the shooting of this video, we're already over 70 subscribers, um, so we only have a little bit further to go. So make sure you get in, because the first 100 subscribers are gonna go into a draw, and we're gonna give away some swag. So make sure you subscribe before then, so you're lucky enough to get in on this draw. And uh, yeah. If I don't see you around, I'll see you square.